Hi, welcome to today's pre-lecture video clip on LC circuits and alternating current. What do we mean by an LC circuit? Well, an LC circuit is a circuit where we have a capacitor in series with an inductor. The capacitor is given value C and inductor L. The capacitor um, uh, will start with a charge on it, plus or minus Q. And we'll define a direction of current I, which corresponds to the discharge. In other words, I is negative dQ dt, where Q is the charge on the capacitor here. <clears throat> the capacitor basically makes a little electric field, and the um, inductor, as it, uh, current flows, will make a magnetic field. So we want to know what's going to happen. We start with electric field, and then we see what's going to happen. So we use Kirchhoff's voltage law. We pick a reference point, say the lower left corner, and we just write down the voltage rule for the capacitor is Q over C minus the voltage rule for the inductor L D I D T. We set that equal to zero according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. We take advantage of the negative sign to rewrite this as D squared D Q D squared T. We rearrange everything into an equation of motion, which is a second order differential equation. D squared Q D T squared plus Q over L C equals zero. Let's write that down one more time. And we have to find solutions to this equation. So how do we do that? Well, we usually the usual trick. We guess the solution. In this case, we're looking for a function whose second derivative is the same within a constant plus a negative constant. And of course, that corresponds to sines and cosines. So in this case, since we start off charged, we'll use a cosine. We can say the charge as a function of time is equal to some constant q naught times a cosine, where omega is equal to a frequency which is set by the value 1 over square root of L over C. Since i is a negative time derivative, then you can define i as the uh, sine function. So the current flow will basically be a sine function that's oscillating. Um, and uh, of course, we can calculate the voltage as well by taking um, uh, another uh, form across the uh, inductor. Uh, you get a, uh, uh, for the voltage, you'll get a cosine. For the current, you get a sine. So this kind of uh, voltage is known as AC, alternating current. And uh, note that to increase the frequency, or uh, we have to increase the frequency, you have to decrease either L or C. So an LC oscillator is an oscillator where there's no energy loss. The energy is basically held in the electric field or the magnetic field, and it basically moves back and forth between the two. Potential energy in the capacitor is CV, 1 half CV squared. The potential energy in the inductor is one half n l i squared. So we can write down the total energy as a function of time, putting in the value of sinusoidal value for voltage, which is a cosine function, uh, plus the current, which is a sine function. Um, and in the case that uh, we choose, uh, set up the system and calculate the values of i and v. Uh, if we can show that uh, CV squared is equal to LI squared, uh, then the time t equals zero, uh, then we can show that uh, this uh, whole expression is equal to a constant, because this cosine and the sine squared will add one. Now, in real life, uh, you don't usually have a perfect LC circuit. You usually have a circuit that has some uh, resistance in it. So we have an C, an R, and an L, an LRC circuit. And again, we start charged. We ask this question, what will happen here? So now we have energy loss to the resistor, so we expect that the oscillation will be damped. We want to write down, um, again, with the same definition of current, we want to write down Kirchhoff's voltage law. So Q over C minus IR minus L di dt. So those are the three components. And uh, we add up the voltages, <laughs> plug in the expression for I, and we get, uh, well, it's an expression with a second order term for Q. Uh, some rearranging to get rid of the fractions, LC times d squared dt squared, that's supposed to be, uh, plus RC times dq to c plus uh, q equals zero. So this is our new equation of motion, which has three terms, again, second order. The solutions are not so easy to guess now. You basically have to use the methods of differential equation. I'll give you the answers. Uh, the charge or any other thing is uh, proportional to an exponential function times an oscillating function with some arbitrary phase. Um, we just have to figure out what the values of these constants are. So gamma is r over 2l, which is corresponds to decay time, the decay rate. And omega is 1 over lc 
minus r squared over 4l squared, which is a slightly different frequency than we had before. So for this danced oscillator then, we have some oscillation in q, v, or i. I'm not going to worry too much about whether it's sine or cosine. And it's oscillating, uh, and it will oscillate with a given period, but as it uh, oscillates, uh, the rate will decay. There will be some exponential envelope. And the time constant for that decay will be 2L over R, and the frequency will be given by that term there above there, 1 over LC minus R squared over 4C. So this basically tells us what we expect for an RLC circuit, uh, where we start an oscillation going, and the oscillation decays exponentially.